Hello everyone, Karen Glasser here and welcome to Once Upon a Storytime. I'm so glad you're here. We'd love to hear from you, so whether you're here live or on replay, doesn't matter, we love you to bits. Comment below and say hi. We have a great story for you today, so let's jump in and have some fun. Today we're welcoming back best-selling children's author, Saul Regwan. He's going to be reading from his book, Geraldine and the Space Bees. Saul is an optometrist who loves to write. He is the author of three other successful children's books, Geraldine and the Most Spectacular Science Project, which he read the last time he was on, uh, The Adventures of Pugly Bear, and Dylan and His Magical Robot. Each of his stories teaches children a valuable lesson or moral. He resides in Los Angeles with his wife and three children, and so we welcome him back, Saul. How hey. Are you? hey, everybody. I'm so excited to be back. I this am so talk. excited. I am so excited you're uh, back, too. I'm excited to hear this book. Um, and so, guys, you know the drill. Snuggle up with whoever you came with, your grandma, your grandpa. I want to see your Bubby or Zadie, your mom, your dad. Maybe it's your dog or your cat, or maybe you have some pet bees out there. I don't know. Whoever they are, get comfortable because it's story time. Are you ready, Saul? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely ready. I've been ready go. all morning. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Saul Reguan again, author of my new second book of the Gizmo Girl series, Geraldine and the Space Bees. This is the second book that's come out this year, and I hope you enjoy it. So let's start right to it. I'm going to go ahead and read you the book, and I hope you enjoy it. This is Geraldine's uh, next adventure. All right. Geraldine was watching her mom's flowers. But something was definitely wrong. This is very strange. Where are the rest of the bees? She asked the two lonely bumblebees hovering above her head. See, there's only two bees. And usually she has so many out there floating. Usually there were swarms of bees. Geraldine had even worn her makeshift beekeeper's outfit made from dad's old shirt and mom's favorite lampshade. What could be going on? Where are those bees? What happened? So the next day at school, Miss Headley had a special announcement, but Geraldine was barely listening. She was still thinking about the missing bees. Where were those pesky little insects? She would have to ask her mom after school. Suddenly, she heard the words Space Museum fly out of Miss Headley's mouth. Space Museum? Now she was listening. If you remember on the first book, she was all into space. She wants to be the first woman astronaut to go into Mar to, to land on Mars. So anything with space gets her attention. That's right, Geraldine. And I'm going to do Mrs. Headley's voice like I did before. I have planned a special field trip, repeated Miss Headley. We are going to the Space Museum. Geraldine was excited. She stood up, threw her arms in the air, and shouted, Yes! 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 Ever since she won the science contest with her spectacular telescopic eyeglasses, uh, first book, she had wanted to visit outer space, especially Mars. The day of the field trip arrived and Geraldine packed her th new 3D camera into her backpack. She had made it herself out of recycled plastic and old lenses. She also packed her award-winning eyeglasses just in case. Look, what? <laughs> just in case. She brought that in too from her first uh, ever uh, science contest that she's won. Everyone was fascinated as the tour guide, Mr. Carter, described what it is like to travel in outer space. And this is his voice. Floating in zero gravity feels amazing. One little push can send you gliding through the air, he explained to the group. And look at that. Whoop, they're gliding and, and floating and bobbing through, it, through space. Well, that's her imagination. She's thinking like that, but it's true, actually. You do float in space. Then he led them through the exhibits. They saw an enormous rocket, 
two rocket boosters, a space shuttle engine, and a video of a rocket launch. Geraldine was fascinated when Miss Carter said that scientists send plants and animals into space to see how they adapt to space travel. At the end of the tour, Mr. Carter announced that he had homework for the class. Each of you will create a model of something you would like to send into outer space and explain why. Well, what would you like to send to outer space? If you had something that you wanted to send out, what would it be? I'm very curious to hear. So, I would send an elephant, said Brayden, to see if it would float. I would send a spider to see if it would spin a web, said Juliana. How about a cactus, shouted Geraldine. Would it grow down instead of up? That's actually a good question. I wonder if a cactus would grow down since there's no gravity over there. It would be upside down. Mr. Carter told the class that he would come to their classroom in one week to see their projects. Space projects due in one week. That evening, Geraldine thought and thought, what would she most like to send into space? Then she remembered, the bees, the bees. That's right. Her mom told her about bee population declining and that something called pesticides were to blame. That's it, yelled Geraldine. So she put two and two together. I will build a device that will let bees travel into outer space. What if bees could survive in a spaceship without those chemicals? There she goes. She's at it again, building stuff with her gizmos and gadgets. She hunted through her pile of gadgets. She would build a clean, pesticide-free feeding station for the bees that would help scientists learn why bees were disappearing. Rummaging through Dad's shed, Geraldine found an old wooden crate. She filled it with dirt from her mom's pesticide-free garden and painted the outside of the crate purple to attract the bees. Did you know that purple actually attracts bees? I always thought it was yellow, but purple is. She carefully dug up some of mom's flowers and replanted them into the crate, then pressed several of mom's teacups into the dirt. They were just the right size for holding water. Perfect, she thought. The bees will have plenty of room to float around when they become weightless. I like when her tongue sticks out, when she's really concentrating. I love that. Geraldine covered the crate with an old lace curtain and tied it with a pink ribbon. She set the box in her mother's garden with the top slightly open so bees could find their way in. The following week, as her classmates displayed the projects, Geraldine was nervous. She had only been able to capture two bees. When it was Geraldine's turn to present, she took a deep breath and explained, bees are dying because of the pesticides used on flowers. If bees can't pollinate the plants, our food supply will be affected. We have to do something. I would like to send bees into space so they can make more bees in a clean environment. We can raise the new generation of healthy bees and bring them back to Earth. They're all fascinated by this idea. What a clever invention, said Mr. Carter. Can I use it as an exhibit in the Space Museum? Of course, said Geraldine. Miss Headley was proud. So was Mr. Carter. Geraldine was very proud. The end. And then I have something small about pollination, why bees are so important. And bees are extremely important in our environment. And I would love to tell you all about it next time or if you have any questions such a, such a, uh, an important message 
you know, I've been reading in the newspapers for quite a while now how important bees are and hearing from the scientists. And I'm so glad you did a book like this because I think it starts with our children. And as we get older, it start, it, it continues up uh, across the board. We learn from our kids and we learn from you, Saul. So I want to thank you for that. Um, I want to show people how they can go pick up your book. Uh, okay. This is, uh, first, it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, they can go ahead and pick up this book um, by clicking on the link that will populate over in the in the comments in just a second. And also, also, there it goes. It just popped up. And also, if they go over to the site, go over to onceuponastorytime.live, they're going to be able to pick up their free download. Just because we, we want to make sure that the fun continues long after the show is over, right? There you go. There you go. So I want to thank you for that. Um, and I always get asked, how do we stay in touch with the authors? And so like we did the last time, I'm going to make sure that people know how to follow you. They can go over to your website, tosalregwan.com. They can also go visit you on Facebook at Saul Regwan, And they can go visit you on Twitter at Saul underscore Regwan. And on Instagram, if you happen to be an Instagrammer, you can find you on Instagram at Saul Regwan author. And finally, on YouTube at Solster Nation, which I happen to love. I think that is awesome. Uh, so there's lots of ways to find you because you're everywhere. You <laughs> are everywhere. I want to thank you for joining us. Thank today. you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Always fun. Always fun. My dog is actually barking over here because he's having some fun as well. And um, we want to encourage everyone to show uh, be right back with us on Thursday for the next show. And so you go out and give somebody an awesome day. And everyone out there, you go out and give somebody an awesome day. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.